Cool, kapai. Right, do you think you could mute the music for us, Mr. Jeff? Kia ora, tēnā koe. Uh, kia ora everyone. Uh, my name is Matua Kawana, and today we're going to make a really cool Make Code arcade game uh, that's about bees. About bees, but not just any bees, our native bees. Right, so before we get started, I'll just open us up with a quick karakia um, so that we can lay down our weddle today, our challenge. Uh, ko rangi, ko papa, ka puta, ko rongo, ko tāne mahuta, ko tangaroa, ko tūma taonge, ko haumie tikitike, ko tāwhiri mātia, tokono rā, ko rangi ki runga, ko papa ki raro, ka puta te ira, tangata, ki te whai au, ki te au marama, ti hei, mauri ora. Welcome. All right, so this season that we're in now is a special season. It's autumn, also known as Ngahuru in Te Reo Māori. Ngahuru means 10 or the 10th month in Matsuriki Māori, which is the Māori calendar. Um, however, we are now in um, April. We're in April, but that's okay. So Ngahuru now means all of autumn. For us, and it's a special time. It's a time in Aotearoa, New Zealand, to prepare for the coming cold, for the famine, um, and it's also a special time where our native plants, our, our trees, are fruiting, um, and lots of animals like the kiriru, the tui, are going around eating to prepare themselves. Uh, it's also a time when our bees are getting ready for winter. Um, bees in Aotearoa, New Zealand, they don't really hibernate like a bear would. In the northern hemisphere but what they do do is they come together as a hive as a colony and they beat their wings when it gets really cold to keep the hive nice and warm and to keep that energy up they have to collect nectar to turn into honey so we're going to make a game today about our bees your game is going to be about a bee that's collecting the last bits of flower nectar before the coming cold and you've got to dodge the early signs of winter Kapai. So let's get straight into it. I'm going to share my screen now, and I want everyone to jump on their devices, iPads, Chromebooks, whatever you're using. Um, and let's get started. Let me just share my screen. All right. So I want you to go to Google Chrome. Oh, let me just fix my camera so I can see everybody. Head to Google Browser, and I want you to search up Make Code Arcade, M-A-K-E-C-O-D-E, -E, space arcade, A-R-C-A-D. Once you've found this area, then I want you to click um, this link here. All right, let me get my annotation tools up. All right, so this is Awesome Make Code Arcade. And it's a really cool website with lots of built-in tutorials and activities for you to do in your own time. If you scroll down, you'll see lots of cool skill maps, built-in tutorials, and they've got all the instructions to help you make all these cool games, and they're always adding to it. Lots of live streams, and they even have some hardware in here. And we've got some of them floating around. I've got one here you guys to look at. This is called a Meow Bit. You can actually plug it in and play it kind of like an old school Game Boy, which is really cool. It's all right, let's get... It's all, right. all kind of um, like, uh, it's all kind of retro. Yes, yes. Like so you, you may have played arcade. with Scratch. Yeah, that's a good point, Matsuda Jeff. So you may have played with Scratch before, right? Which uses more modern graphics, but this is entirely retro. And retro just means back in the old days, in Araumua, back in the old days, you used to play games and they had pixels and you'd have the spaces, joystick, buttons. Um, What's a pixel, Matua? A, a pixel is a little unit of measurement for a digital screen. And if you look really closely at your screen, you'll see them. They make up the monitor, the screen that you're using, and they're little RGB lights. And when you put heaps of them together, they all shine and they create your picture. 
But back in the old days, we had much smaller screens with less pixels, so you could see them all. They were very big. So you can think of them now as squares of color that we're going to work with. Cup I. All right, so to start our game, uh, we first need to select this orange box. New project. So we're just going to give it a left click. And then we're going to give our project a name. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine B Game. Just because I've made this game before and I'll get confused with all the different projects I've got. So I'm going to call mine B Game. And once you've done, you can select this green create box here. Awesome. This will bring you into Make Code Arcade's development area. And I'll just quickly show you around. On the left side of the screen, we've got this thing here, and it looks exactly like a Nintendo Game Boy, right? But I call this the game controller. You can move it around left and right. You've got two buttons to play with. Um, it also, we can play music, all sorts of things. Uh, over here in this big open space, this is our coding area. This is where we're going to drag and drop code into um, to build the logic of our game. And right in the middle, this is our coding drawer, and you'll notice that it's color coordinated. So I'll be using the colors to help us find where we need to go. And if you click on them, it opens up kind of like a drawer. And inside, we have all the code that we need. Carpi. So the big difference between this one and something like Scratch is that the code for Make Code is focused on retro gaming, 2D retro gaming. Awesome. So let's get started. Let me zoom in to make it easier for everyone to see what I'm doing. Awesome. All right, so everybody should start with this green on start code. And what this does is it basically means that when the game begins, it's going to run all the code that we put inside of here, which is like 80% of our code. And it'll run that all straight away as soon as the game starts. So. The first thing that we're going to do, oh, also, by the way, it, all the code that we put in here will automatically be updated into here. So we can use this space to see what we're doing. Kapai. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a background. All right. So our background, you can find it in this dark blue, this dark gray blue called scene so if you click on scene i want you to scroll down and you're looking for this code here set background color two right so i want you to left click and drag that inside of the on start so i'll do it for you Set background to left click drag. And if we hover it over the on start and let go, it'll snap into place just like let go. Awesome. All right. So now to pick the color, we need to select this circle here, the gray circle. So if we select that, we can then pick a color. Now, we have what's called a restrictive color palette. When in retro arcade games, it was mostly 8-bit. Eight, eight it was all 8-bit. So it had a limited amount of colors that you could work with, right? So my, Make Code Arcade replicates that. So we only have this amount of colors to work with. So I want you to pick any color you want. It's your game. You get to choose. I would recommend not picking yellow because I'm going to make my B yellow. And so it might not stand off the background very well. You might want to do a green to represent like the grass. Right? I am going to do this brown because I'm going to draw a flower later on. And I want to do a green stem and I want it to stand out. So I'm going to pick this brownie color. Kapai. All right. Is everyone ready for the next? Ah, there you There's everybody. Kia ora. Is everybody ready for the next bit of code? 
Yeah, okay, here we go. Right, so the next bit of code is we're going to start a countdown timer. When you're making a game, you should have challenge. Right, A game should have some challenge. If it's got no challenge, then it's probably going to become boring somewhere along the line right, for many games. So to put in a challenge, we're going to select the timer, and you do that by going to the salmon. Yes, that's a color. Salmon info. Salmon info. And you're going to scroll down, and you're looking for one that says start countdown 10 seconds. So let's see if we can find it. Start, you'll find it in the countdown area. You're looking for this one here. Start countdown. Left click, drag and drop it inside of our on start. Left click, drag, and we want to stick it underneath the set background color too. Perfect. Right, so now you'll see over here, we've got a timer running at the top of our screen. So that'll give us 10 seconds, and we've got to collect a random amount of flowers before the timer runs out. Kapai. How did you right. make it go full screen, Matua? Ah, good point, Matua Jeff. If you would like to make your screen go full and big on your screen, you need to select this full screen button. Point a big arrow to it. If you click on that, it'll make your game game controller go really big. Cup eye. All right, let's make a character that we can move around, eh? Let's make something we can move around. So to do that, we're going to go to the dark blue sprites at the very top of your code drawer. Dark blue sprites. And we're going to look for the very first bit of code. Set my sprite to sprite kind of player. So I want you to left click, drag, and drop that at the bottom of the start countdown 10 seconds. Right? So now we're going to do some art. We're going to do some pixel art. All right, that sounds pretty cool. To do some pixel art in uh, make code, you need to select this gray box. So everybody click on that gray box. Once you've clicked on that box, you'll get this big screen that we can start doing our pixel art on. Now, rem remember what I said about the restrictive color palette? Over here, you've only got those colors to work with. My recommendations, we're going to do a black outline or use a darker color so that it stands out um, from our backdrop, from the, the background color we set. So I'm going to show you how I drew, how I draw my B. And I like to start uh, my art with the outline sometimes. Feel free to make whatever you'd like. I'm going to make a B for this activity. So I'm going to select the pencil tool right at the top. If you make a mistake, before we get into it, actually, if we make a mistake down the bottom here, we have our undo and redo keys. You can click that and it'll go back. You can use the rubber. It's this top tool over here. All right. If you would like to fill in a color, you can use the bucket. All right. Very standard tools. That should be everything that we need to know. All right. Let's go. So I'm going to choose the black and I'm going to start coloring in. I'm going to do six at the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six. And just start drawing up your character. And we'll go pretty quick so we don't run out of time to do the rest of our game. Well, I guess you can always come back to this, right? If, if That's you right. Do a rough drawing and then come back and refine it. That's right. Yeah, I'll go pretty fast because I'm pretty good. At making this, and I've made it before. But if we just, if you just get something quickly done, then we can do all the hard part, which is the code, and then later on you can come back and make it look really pretty. Hmm. There we go. We want to keep our balance. So I'm just going to finish off the last of the B. Let's throw in the antenna. So when we're using our limited, um, our limited colors like this and the limited space, right? We don't have a lot of space. 
sometimes you have to be really creative about how you create a shape or distinguish a shape. Right, I'm going to use the bucket tool now with my yellow, and I'm going to start filling in all the gaps. Put in some eyes. Don't worry about how fast I'm going. Boom. And there is my B. So looking at our time, I'll give everyone one more minute to finish off your pixel B or whatever art you're doing. One strategy to help is to count how many blocks, especially if you want to keep something even, you can count how many squares you're taking up. And then you can kind of work out how to draw the pattern. So you can kind of see with all the dots that I've put down, how many blocks I used in order to get the shape. Kapai, 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, we have to move on to the rest of our code now. So it's okay if you haven't finished, we can come back and do some more later on. So what I want you to do now is to go down to the bottom and click the big green done button. Big green done button, click on that. And now that'll add our artwork to our game. And you'll notice if I full screen, there is my lovely bee ready to go, All right? But I can't move it around. None of the controls work because we haven't programmed it to have any movement. So let's fix that now. So to add some movement, you may have already guessed, we're going to go to the orange controller tab, orange controller. Click on orange controller just under sprites, and you're going to find the very top code, move my sprite with buttons. So if you click on that, left click drag, underneath the B I just created, this code, right, if you notice, my sprite, that's the name of my B, and my sprite is also the same name inside of the move with buttons. So that tells the game that I want to move the B with the buttons. So let's try it now. So you can use W, A, S, and D. You can use your mouse and move around the controller, the joystick. You can use the arrow keys. Kapai, if you would like your B to go faster, you can select on the plus button and change the speed here. The speed is in pixels per second. So the bigger the number, the more pixels it moves per second. Awesome. Now, we're going to leave the B where it is because it's great in the middle of the screen. And we're now going to set up some flowers. Now, there's lots of ways to do this, but I'm a programmer, so I like to do things efficiently. I would like between five and 10 flowers, right? I want to change it up so that it's uh, different every time I play. Um, and I want them to be created in random places across my screen. So the first thing we need to do is we've got to create something called a loop. So I want you to go to the green loop, green loop, left click on that. And I want you to find one that says repeat four times do. Repeat four times do. This one here. Left click and drag that into our on start. Like so. Cool. Now, we're going to use this block quite a lot. So I'm going to go into detail now. That way you know how it works later on. So 
I want to create some randomness in my game. And to do that, I have to use the purple math. So if you all click on the light purple math, right at the very bottom, math, it's one of our favorite subjects. <laughs> click on the math, and then I want you to scroll down until you find one that says pick random 0 to 10. Pick random 0 to 10. Left click and drag. Now, this one's special, right? This is an input. So we need to drag it and drop it inside of where the number four is. You'll see that, that white circle. We want to drag it into that. If you click and drag, it'll have a red circle on it. That tells you that that input is ready to be installed, right? And if I drag it over to where the four is, it'll connect itself. It'll glow, it'll glow bright yellow and you'll know. And if I let go, it'll snap into place. Cool. Now, I want you to change the numbers 0 and 10. Oh, sorry, 0. I want you to change that to 5. All right, so that says repeat a number between 5 and 10. All right. Now, we're going to make a flower. So we're going to do some more pixel art. So head back up to dark blue sprites. Dark blue sprites. And I want you to select set my sprite 2 to sprite kind of player. All right, we're going to change this. Left click, drag it's right at the very top. And we're going to put it inside the repeat block that we just created. All right, so not at the bottom, inside. Let me zoom out a little. There we go. Now, it, before we start making the art, before we start making that, we need to make one quick change. This is not a player. This is our flower. So we need to change this box here. I'll pick another color so you can see it better. If you click on this white down arrow, we'll get a little drop box and we can pick a type called food. So left click on the player. We want to scroll the menu until we find food. That tells the game that when you um, go and get the flower, it should be counted as food, not as a player, not to be controlled. That's very important. All right. Once you've done that, let's start doing some art. And I'm going to give you another minute to do this. So I want you to select the gray box. Select the gray box. And let's start drawing a flower. So I am going to start with a stem, a leaf. Mm, no, I don't like that. So if you make a mistake, just control Z or undo. Perfect. And then let's just start drawing our flower. I might do pink. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. I'll just start coloring it in. Feel free to do your flower however you'd like. Hmm. I might make my flower a bit thicker. So you got 30 more seconds to draw your flower. Don't worry if you don't finish. We can always come back and do it again. There we go. There is my flower. Now, it might look funny here, but I promise when it goes on the screen, it'll look a lot better. Oh, 10 more seconds. Finish off your flower. Five, four, three, two, one. And we're done. Right. Bottom of the screen, click on the green done button. Here we go. Now, if we have a look at our game, we will see our bee and tons of flowers all stacked on top of each other, right? To fix that, we need a little bit of code. So we are going to create two more pieces of code to fix this. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go back to sprites, back to dark blue sprites, click on that. 
And you're going to scroll down until you find one. It's very close to the top. Chord set my sprite position to X and Y. I would like you to left click and drag that inside our loop. So set my sprite position X and Y. Left click and drag underneath the flower we just created. Awesome. Cool. And you might notice the game will run and your B will be right at the top left side of the um, the game controller. K to Pi, we need to change this set my sprite to, you probably guessed it, my sprite to. All right, we need to make sure that they're matching, that these are matching each other. That way the game knows to move the flowers to this position. Now, if you don't know what X and Y is, that's okay. On our game controller, this is X. That's left and right. And this is Y, up and down. So when we say Y, we're saying up and down. And when we say left and right, we're saying X and Y, although it's actually flipped upside down for a monitor. It's actually the opposite way. And on side of this, this is called, this is a grid. This becomes a grid and it has coordinates at the very top. It's zero and zero, zero Y, zero X. And what we want is we want our flowers to spawn in all sorts of random locations. Now, don't worry, I've gone and counted all the pixels for you. <laughs> uh, and so I will give you all the numbers you need to know. All right. So we want to pick a random number from X20 to X155 and Y18 and to Y120. That way we get a nice spread across our screen. So to do that, we're going to go back to game. Oh, sorry. That's incorrect. We're going to go back to math. So head to purple math. Scroll down. Look for pick random. And you're going to need two two of these so let's do it twice pick random put it in x is zero move my screen around let's do it one more time purple math pick random and put it where y is zero I'll have to zoom out a little so that was probably the trickiest thing that we're going to have to do today did everyone manage to get that part sorted yeah Cool, that was the trickiest bit. So if you've got that, you've done the hardest part of the game. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to give you the numbers now. So you just copy me. I'll put the numbers in inside of the white inputs here. So the first one on our X, that we're going to use uh, 20. And instead of 10, we're going to change that to 155. Oh, so 20, 155, and on the Y pick random, where the zero is, the zero, the first input, we're going to put 18. And where it says 10, we're going to put in 120. Once you've done that, You'll notice, this should happen in yours, that you'll get a spread of flowers all over the place. Some of your flowers might o overlap. That's okay. All right? So you might end up with 10 flowers. You might end up with five flowers. That's a, you're the smallest amount, the minimum. Right. So there's one more thing that we need to do to make this game work. We need to get points, eh? We need to collect some points, right? So to collect some points, we need to set a variable, right? So a variable is just a fancy word for a data storage location. 
where we can store things, kind of like a lunchbox stores food, our variable is going to store a number. And it's the number of flowers that you can collect. All right? So to do that, we're going to go right to the bottom, just above math, to that looks kind of pinky to me on my screen. So I want you to select variables. Click on variables. And we're going to go right to the top to this big empty box that says make a variable. Make a variable. So variables, make a variable. We're going to click on it. And it'll open up a box for us where we can type in a name for our variable. And I'm going to call mine hmm spawned all right because we're going to keep track of how many flowers we've created spawned s t a w n e d spawned you can call this variable whatever you want just don't call it life i think that's the only one you're not allowed to use or you might who knows all right so once you have created your variable, you should have typed that out. Go ahead and click the green OK button. Awesome. And now we will have access to this one here where it says change. Mine will say spawned. Yours will say whatever variable you called it, whatever name you called it. Change spawned by one. We want to left click and drag and put that right at the bottom underneath the set my sprite to position x and y random all right Woo. awesome so that's all pretty much done now so that's got all of that code sorted out now we've got one more big block of code to do but we can create a shortcut for this we're going to create a shortcut because we've already done a lot of the code we're going to duplicate all of it right to save us time and instead of having a flower, we're going to create frost, right? So to duplicate, it's very easy, right? You want to head over to where this repeat block is, right? The repeat block you just created. Left click on it so that it glows nice and yellow and you know what you're selecting. Using your right mouse button or on a Chromebook, I think it's double tap. Yep two fingers or your right button on your trackpad or your iPad. I think you press and hold if you've got an iPad. And you want to open up this context drop down menu. And you're going to go along and select duplicate. Left click. And that'll create all of that code for you. So we don't have to do it again. Carpi. And let's just, let's leave it the way it is for now. I want you to drag it. And so if you drag it from the repeat, we're going to put it inside the on start at the very bottom, but not inside our previous repeat block. We want it to be underneath it, like so. Whew. That saved us from doing a lot of coding. Right. Now, we've got one more, one more asset, one more sprite to make. But the first thing we need to do is we need to do a little bit of quick cleanup, right? We've already got a my sprite too, right? So we need to change this. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Click on the white drop down arrow inside of the new repeat block we just created, right? Click on it, right? You'll see that we've got my sprite, my sprite two, and spawned. We're going to go down the bottom, and we're going to select this one here. It says new variable. Right, I want you to click on that, and I'm going to call mine Frost. F R O S T, Frost. You can call it winter, you could call it cold. I'm going to call it Frost. Once you've done that, press the green OK button. Cool. Now you can see that we have named that one Frost. I want you to go ahead and change. Though the one underneath it, and I want you to delete this bit of code here where it says change spawn by one. We've already done that. We can get rid of that one now. So change my sprite two to frost. Left click on the down arrow, press frost. 
And to delete a bit of code, you left click and drag the change spawn and take it to the code draw. It'll glow bright red. We let go. Gone. Cool. <laughs> Two more things that we have to do before we're nearly finished. We need to change this food. What do you think we need to change this to? Have a click on it. And you'll see four different things that we can choose. Player, projectile, food, or enemy. What do you think the winter, the frost, is going to be? Enemy? If you guess enemy, you guess correct. We're going to select enemy. And finally, to finish up this big block of code, we're going to select on the sprite area where the flower is. And I want you to click on that. Click on that gray box. And we're going to get rid of all of this. And we're going to draw an enemy. It could be spikes. I'm going to do like blue wintry spikes. So we can just take the rubber tool. And just rub it all out. The rubber tool or the eraser is up here. Cool. Once you've erased the old flower that we, we had in there, we're going to put in something new, something dangerous for the bee. All right. So I'm going to draw a frost. So I'm going to start with a blue center, cold and blue. And then I'm going to draw a box around that. And I'm going to draw some spikes. Try and keep it all nice and even. I might draw some more spikes off to the side. Like so. All right. I'll give you 30 more seconds to finish off your... Whatever your dangerous thing is. There we go. And there's my dangerous frost. So again, we don't have a lot of blocks to work with. So just try and get the general impression, the general shape. Cut by 15 more seconds. Ten. We can always come back and make it look really good afterwards. Five, four, three two one all right so we should be finished or we will finish our sprite so now i want you to go down and click the green done button right and if we have a look at our game you'll notice that we have flowers a random amount of flowers and a random amount of uh dangerous cold frost right and at the moment it doesn't do anything so we've got to put in four more blocks of code which will tell us what to do. The first one, we want to get one point every time we touch a flower, right? We've collected one nectar. And we want to put a game over if you touch the cold frost. All right? So we're finished now with our on start. So I'm just going to move it out of the way. And we're going to, I'm going to start coding in a new empty space. Right. So what we want now is we want a bit of code that says on sprite of kind player overlaps other sprite of kind food we're going to change the score by one and we're going to remove the flower so we can only get one point and it goes away right and if you notice we what did we call food our flower right so to find this code you need to go to sprites dark blue sprites All right, so now that we're in dark blue sprites, we need to scroll down, scroll down, all the way down until you find this bit of code here. Overlaps on kind of player. All right, and it's rather than just being a single block, it's actually like a big waha, like a mouth, right? Because it's going to accept code inside of it. 
right i want you to left click and drag that piece of code onto our into our coding area cool at the very end where it says player i want you to left click on that and change that to food where it says player left click change it to food cool now to set our score we have to go to info info salmon info and you're going to find this bit of code here change score by otahi by one change score by otahi left click drag and we're going to drag it inside of that new blue box that we just created the new overlap code right that means when we touch a flower we're going to get points right but you'll notice that there's a bit of a bug when i touch it it just generates hundreds of points because i need to get rid of the flower all right one more code to finish this one off go back to sprites dark blue sprites and then scroll down until you find one that says destroy my sprite destroy my sprite all right left click and drag that inside of our overlap code under the change score by one cool now this one's another little tricky bit we're going to take this my sprite and we're going to throw it in the rapahi in the rubbish all right so left click on this my sprite and drag it into the coding drawer it'll go red and we can let it go it's now in the ipu para in the rubbish bin all right then next we want to take this bit of code of the sprite right at the very top all right next to kind of food and you're going to left click and drag that into here into the destroy into that empty spot we just created like so what that does is it tells the game not to destroy all of the flowers but only the flower that we're touching right, and that's really important when we're coding all right one two three four more bits of code to go and we've got 12 minutes we can do this let's go fam so all right yeah let, let's do this so let's go back to dark blue sprite back to dark blue sprite and we're looking for another overlap code just like we did for the flower we're now going to go down and we're looking for another one and this time we're going to do it for our enemy the cold frost all right so look for on sprite kind of player overlaps other sprite kind of player left click and drag and drop it anywhere in the coding area all right once again we need to change this type of player all right just gonna zoom in a little oh nope all right we need to move this type player right and you've probably guessed it already we're going to change it to enemy all right so now when the player the b overlaps with the enemy game over all right that's very easy to do we're going to go to purple game purple game just under controller and you're going to scroll down until you find one that says game over game over cool so this one here i want you to left click and drag that inside of the overlap code for the enemy we just created now finally to wrap that up i want you to click on the green win and it should say lose right because we want to lose the game we don't want to lose the game but when we touch the frost we want to lose the game <laughs> we want the game to be over this might be a good time to uh point out where the mute button is on the game matua ah uh, yes especially <laughs> if someone has discovered the um music if you have discovered yeah. where the music is and how to make that work 
If you would like to mute your game, because it's getting too noisy, you need to click on the speaker over here under your controller. And that'll mute the music. All right. So one, two, three, four more bits of code to go. Ten minutes. Here we go. Let's finish with our game uh, and see how we're doing. All right. So we're going to create a new, a new function now, a new space for us to code. We want to go to the dark green logic. Oh, sorry, loops. Go to the green loops. On the home stretch here, far note. I want you to select the forever. Forever. Take that forever loop. And if you don't know, forever means forever. So when anything inside of the forever loop is going to be run through over and over and over again for as long as the game is running. All right. So now inside of this forever loop, we want a piece of code that says if the score is the same as the spawned flowers, then you've won the game. And so win the game, confetti, hooray. All right. So to do that, we need to go to the baby blue logic. Baby blue logic. I'll zoom back in. Baby blue logic. And we're looking for the very first one. If true, then. Left click, drag. Oh, inside our forever loop. Cool. Now you might, might have noticed that the shape for true is six sides, it's a hexagon. We need to find an input that matches that shape, right? So that we can compare the score and the number of flowers that should be on screen. To do that, we've got to go back to logic, back to baby blue logic. We want to scroll down until we find an area called comparisons. And we're looking for a piece of code that says zero equals kore, zero. Zero equals zero. Left click, drag, all right? And it's got that yellow border again. And I want you to drop it where it says true. All right, so I'll do it again. Logic, if, oh, sorry, equals drag and drop right three more bits of code we're nearly there cool so now we've got it saying if this number is the same as this number then you've won the game so to get those numbers we need to go to salmon info salmon info and the very first input the very first variable there is called score I want you to take that score, left click, and put it on the left, the left zero, the left input, and let it go. Cool. Last but not least, for our if condition, you need to go to variables, pink variables, or future could be future. I can't really see my screen's a bit funny. And I want you to find this one right at the bottom. For me, it's at the bottom called spawned. Right? Whatever you called your variable for the flower. Right? Mine is called spawned. I want you to left click, drag that into the right zero, the right input, and let it go. All right? Now we've got a comparison. We're comparing the score with how many flowers there should be, right? And if they match, what does that mean? It means you've collected them all. Right, let's wrap this game up. We're going to go back to game. Back to game, purple game. And we're looking for game over. Right, this one here, right at the very top. Game over. And we're going to leave it for win this time. So left click and drag. Inside the forever, inside the if. Just like that. All right. So now that says 
if the score equals spawned, you've won the game. All right, good work. Awesome. So let's test it. Let's test it. So this should work. All right, press play. Oh, yeah. So I hit the I hit the frost there, and I uh, and I lost the game. Sometimes the frost might spawn in the middle where the bee is. That's okay. With a bit more time, you could probably work that out with some more code. So you can make sure that the frost doesn't spawn in the middle. So let's go around, click all the flowers. There you go. Won the game. All right. So that's pretty good. We managed to get that done within our uh, with about 45 minutes, which is pretty awesome. All right. Is everyone's game working? So Matawa, um, one thing which I found that my my I had an issue where the the um the simulator wouldn't the the game control thing wouldn't it was just kind of going round and round and it wouldn't actually display it was just grey the whole time, and what I found was that I needed to set my spawned variable up first. Because we ah. change it in the repeat loop, change spawns by one in that first yes. repeat, but we don't set it up to be zero. Mm. So once I had went back into variables and got set spawned to zero and put that up above, it worked. Yeah. So if you're having that same issue as Matua Jeff, you could put this variable here at the top. Is that what you're saying, Matua Jeff? Is Aye. that how you fixed it? I Like that. Aye. Right, so if you're having that issue where your game won't load, you can put this same variable, except we're going to use the set. What that does is that resets it back to zero. Right? So it always starts at zero before we start counting upwards. But theoretically, if it's all working properly, it should it should work because the game should reset itself every single time. If it's working properly, sometimes it doesn't like to play ball and doesn't like to work properly. But there we go. Now, that's just the start. You could do a whole bunch with this. You could set up a color timer in the corner over here. I've done this in a previous one where it changes colors from green to yellow to orange to red, following the same cycle that deciduous trees do, which indicates autumn for people in the Northern Hemisphere. And in some places around Aotearoa, New Zealand, where we've placed trees whose leaves fall off in autumn. That could be something cool. You might want to do some, some other ngarara, some other insects that move side to side and try to grab the bee. Right, and they might move side to side. That could be quite interesting. More things to dodge. Maybe you have less time, five seconds. Right, instead of ten seconds. Um, maybe the flowers move around. Who knows? Maybe the frost moves around, or it keeps being created randomly across the screen. Right, there's many, many ways that we can take this game. Anyway. I'm super, super proud of you guys for being able to do this in 40 minutes. You know, Make Code Arcade can be pretty tough sometimes. So give yourself a pat on the back for doing such an awesome job. Thank you guys very, very, very much. Um, is there anything you would like to add, Matua Jeff, before I close us off with a karakia? Well, I was just wondering if anybody at Brown Space School had any questions for you, Matua. Oh, anybody got one. any questions? Hi guys, uh, who's got a question? Yep, Liam, sit up please. Big I, voice. Can I you hear us? I, I can hear you. Cool. You only have one flower. Yeah. You only have one flower. Let's have a look. Do you have this block here? Pick random. Yes. Do, do you have multiple numbers here where it says five and ten? Oh, that's Liam. Yeah. Yes. Yep. 
All right. And you're only getting, oh, do you have, so you're creating lots of flowers. Is it showing one flower maybe in the middle of the screen? Yeah. Okay. Do you have this block right here? Set my sprite to X position, Y position. Yes. And do you have the two random blocks inside of it? Yep. Hmm. I'd need to have a look at your screen. Oh. All right. Maybe you could compare with somebody yeah. else in classes who's yeah. code and see if you can see where they differ. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, look at each other's now. Yeah. Yeah. Can That's just... an important step. That's called debugging. If yeah. you have a problem in your code, you've got to go back and debug it, find out what's not working. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Um, are we on collecting our flowers? What does that mean? We aren't um, collecting our flowers. Um, we are. When we um, walk into the flowers, it doesn't disappear at all. Ah, that's what this... Do you have this bit of code here? No, listen. Yeah. That bit of code there. Yeah. That one there. If your flower is not disappearing, you need to make sure no. you have this destroy block. And it needs to have this variable in it, this other sprite. It has to be inside of it. That tells the game that you're trying to remove the flower you're touching and not all the flowers. So it's really important that you drag this and drop it over here. But we have done that and it's okay. So what, what we're going to do, guys, is we're all going to look at each other's and we'll help each other out, okay? Yeah. What okay, I can do, um, Browns Bay School, is I can send my saved copy over to your teacher, and then she might be able to put it onto the computer, and then you can see my code working in live in action. Oh, perfect. That would be yeah. great. I'll send okay. it to your email. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you very yeah. much. Oh, before we finish, I should probably oh, show you guys how to save your games, eh? So they don't get deleted. Okay. Right. Does everyone have a Google account for school? Yeah. Yes. If you have a Google account, I'll show you two ways. The first way is you can download it to your device. If you go to the bottom of your screen, right, you'll see the name of your game. Mine's called B Game. But you'll also see this. This is called a floppy disk. Now, you won't know what a floppy disk is, or some of you, most of you won't know. Back in the old days, it was a way to save onto something kind of like a disk. You might not even know what a disk is. <laughs> but does it matter? This little button right at the bottom, the floppy disk, you click on it and it will download a copy of your game, right? If you have a Google account, you can click on this sign in button at the top right of the screen. Okay. Sign and in. you should be able to sign in with your Google account here. Continue with Google. You should be able to sign in with your school account and that'll save all of your games to the cloud. So anytime you want to make any more Make Code Arcade games, you can find them all or save all the progress of your tutorials that you do. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. We've really enjoyed those, all those sessions. They've been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, what do you say, guys? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Brown Space School and Tamariki for coming along and enjoying our uh, Make Code Arcade uh, activity. Fantastic. Thank you. Take care. Awesome. Thank you. Kakite. Kakite. Kote. Bye. Bye, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>